All right, hello. Uh, right now we are discussing realized return and yield uh, and about how it differs from a basic interest rate. Uh, now, when we look at an interest rate, if we stick money in a bank today, is that we look at what an interest rate is going to accrue on that money in our savings account. So that is more of a forward-looking investment. Now, when we look at our realized return, it's something that happens after we realize something, right? You just think about something, oh, you walk down the street, oh, I just realized that this, that, or the other thing happened. Same sort of thing. A realized return is a past looking. It is what we have actually attained, okay? And we, we most commonly refer to this as a yield. So what did this investment yield, okay? Now, the way we compute this is that we set a yield as being equal to uh, a couple of different things, okay? So we are going to separate this into two components, um, one of which is going to be a price appreciation yield, okay? So that's a price, pre price appreciation yield, and then we also have a capital gains yield, okay? Now these two differ in a little bit of a ways, one of which is a price appreciation, um, so that is the price of the asset that you bought actually went up. Right, so let's say that you go out and you buy a car for ten thousand dollars, and you sell it later for eleven thousand dollars. Okay, that doesn't happen to most of us, but let's say that it did for you. Okay, so you bought the car for ten thousand, you sold it for eleven thousand dollars, and you're gonna have price appreciation there. Okay, so that is a price appreciation yield. Now that car is not gonna give you any capital gains yield. It's not gonna give you dividend income or interest income. Okay. Where this goes into is that we have stocks and bonds, is that they have paid interest payments and they pay dividend payments. Okay, so that's what we refer to as capital gains. Okay. Now, the way we do this is that we have our price appreciation yield, which I denote as being the setup just like this. So we have the new price minus the old price divided by the old price. Okay, and the little ditty that I go to remember this is new minus old over old. I mean, re repeat it with me. New minus old over old. New minus old over old. Okay, that should be just embrained right, right up here. New minus old over old. Okay. And then we're also going to be looking at here for our capital gains yield. This is going to be our dividends plus our interest payments divided by the beginning price. Okay. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind here is that we're not going to have dividends and interest on, on anything because there's not an asset that's going to be paying us those. If we're owning a bond or we have money in a savings account that is paying interest, that is an interest component. If we own stock that pays a dividend, a yearly dividend or a, a semi-annual dividend, whatever it is, then that is going to tell us what that dividend amount is. Okay. So these are two components, but we can set this all up into one component. So we look at our new price minus the old price plus dividends plus interest divided by the old price. Okay, now don't let that equation sit there and say, oh man, I need to just remember this. Uh, what do I do? Okay, it's, it's really, it's not, not that difficult. What is on the numerator on the top of this equation is the dollar amount gained. Okay. So how much did we actually gain? We bought this stock for $80, the stock went up to $83 and it paid a dollar dividend. How much did I actually gain there? What was the dollar amount that I gained above the price or below, because right, I can lose money here. What is the amount that I gained above the price that I paid? And then that is divided by the beginning price. Okay. So it's actually, it's pretty straightforward. So. Now let's look at just give a quick example. Let's say that you buy a, a stock last year with a price of $34. Okay. It paid a dividend over the year in the amount of $1.25. Okay. And the new price, okay, P1, the price today is say at $35. Okay. So what we have here is that we want to, first of all, let's think about this and think about how much we have actually gained. Okay, so we have a new price, minus, new minus old over old, so we have our new price is 35 minus 34 divided by the 34. Make sure you get those in the right place. Make sure you have the old price on the bottom, otherwise you put the new price, it's going to give you a totally uh, an incorrect answer. 
Okay? And then we're going to add on to that our $1.25 dividend. Okay? Now, what did we gain from our, our, the price of our stock here? 35 minus 34. We gained $1. Okay? Plus $1.25 was the dividend that was paid out to us. So that means that we have $2.25 is our gain divided by our $34, okay? which means that we are going to have a 6.6% yield. Okay? That is what this investment actually returned to us, 6.6%. Okay? Now, in order to get to that 6.6%, I should clarify, is that this number right here, this 2.25 divided by 34, that is actually going to give us in a decimal form. So we are having to multiply this by 100 in order to get down into the percentage. Okay, um, So that's going to tell us what that yield is. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and, and try and, and work another one here where we will have, let's say, an old price of... Uh, twenty-seven dollars, a new price of twenty-five dollars, and let's say that we have an interest payment received. Okay, this is a bond. Let's say we received an interest payment in the amount of one dollar. Okay, let's think about what our yield is going to be here. Okay, so we're going to have our new price minus our old price. Right? Did it, it, first of all, did this stock make any? Excuse me, this bond make any money? No, this, this, this bond lost money, right? It lost $2 on the price appreciation. Okay, so it was $27, now it's $25, but we did get a dollar in interest there, which comes out here. That's divided by what? Is it 27 or 25? What's our old price? Our old price is 27. Okay, so we lost $2 plus $1 we gained divided by 27, which means that we have basically one divided by 27. So we're gonna have a loss here of 3.7%. Okay, that is what our yield is. Okay. It's actually very straightforward and you know, just, just don't get too bogged down in, okay, what are these each individual components? Just simply put, when we're looking at our yield, it's the amount of gain that we had, gain or loss that we had, divided by the beginning price.